thank you for the kind invitation uh, to come to uh, Ukraine. It's the first time for me. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm uh, presenting data on secondary osteoporosis. I've focused over the last years a lot on this topic. And it will be in two parts. First is the diabetes part, and the second part are chronic inflammatory diseases. So first of all, um, as you all know, we have a lot of um, influences on bone strength, not just the bone mineral density, but also the bone microstructure and the uh, material properties, the geometry and the community risk factors, as well as the bone turnover. And uh, with secondary osteoporosis, we have, as, or these ones which we focus um, today, um, we have a problem, problem in almost all these, um, these uh, different factors which um, yeah, which, which have an influence on the bone stability. So first of all, we have the di type 2 diabetes. Um, you all saw yesterday this um, image. It's a um, cooperation project with the Austrian Society for, di uh, for Diabetes. And we, um, or especially my colleague, uh, Christian Muschitz, uh, wrote this um, um, article um, in joint venture with the Diabetes uh, uh, Society. And we have um, multiple um, problems in type 2 diabetes um, with, an increase, um, in, with an increased risk of fracture. So as we already heard, we have an increased um, risk of falling, but also the patients have um, decreased physical activity. We have on a cellular um, level an increase of um, adipocytes and a reduction of osteoblasts and an increase of Osteoblast and um, the, on the matrix uh, level, we have the advanced uh, macularization end products, which are um, in the matrix, and also the, the porosity of the cortical bone is increased in patients with type 2 diabetes. So, um, we formed an algorithm um, for the um, uh, treatment uh, for type 2 diabetes and also for um, the osteoporosis because there are a lot of drugs used in type 2 diabetes which have a positive effect uh, on bone mineral density, or at least a neutral effect. And we have also critical um, medications which should not be used in patients with um, already existing osteoporosis or should be critically, criti critically re-evaluated. Re so we have on the left-hand side the recommended ones, which are the metformin and the GLP-1 receptor antagonists, and the neutral ones um, in the upper part. And critical should be um, used the uh, sulfonylureas, most likely because the patient has an increased risk of falling in hypoglycemia as well as in the insulin-treated patients. And uh, the glitazones, as you all know, they have a, a direct negative effect um, on bone. The rest is modification of lifestyle, which is also recommended, um, and the treatment of osteoporosis. Um, is, according to the national guidelines, not different in these patients. So if you look into the bone microstructure of type 2 diabetes patients, um, we saw it already yesterday and also in this study, um, there is um, actually in this one an increase of trabecular and cortical bone, but the material strength in this um, bone is reduced. And also the physical performance of the patients was uh, significantly lower compared to those without diabetes. Um, I found one study on trabecular bone score, and I think trabecular bone score is, as you all know, a very feasible tool to, to use in type 2 diabetes because we often do not have a real uh, decrease of, of BMD, but uh, if you have the trabecular bone score which is decreased, it helps to identify patients at risk. And um, in this study on uh, 500, uh, or approximately 500 men and women in Australia, um, they uh, found out that if you add the uh, trabecular bone score into the FRAG score, if you try to, to get the risk of the patient, um, there is a good discrimination within the, the glycemia group. So if you have the, those with the impaired um, fasting glucose and those with the type 2 diabetes, and um, there was a good discrimination of these patients, especially in the younger women. And I think this is quite interesting. All over the rest, the TBS was reduced, but there was no uh, difference between normal leukemia and the impaired fasting glucose. So this is uh, just a short overview. We already saw it yesterday that patients who have a diabetes and fracture 
uh, show increased cortical porosity and increased changes in the, in the bone microstructure. Um, this is um, a project we um, we are doing in cooperation with uh, the um, university in Munich, um, where we are trying to find a different approach to to identify patients at risk um, from existing CT scans. So, if the patient has a CT scan already performed, this is just an additional protocol which gives you an overview of the the BLB, as well, the, the, the 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 P score. It is a, Complex uh, physical <laughs> method with um, point uh, as a non-rigid point set registration. So you you map this um, this vertebra and uh, you can get an, an, an information about uh, the T score of these patients. But it's still ongoing, so I do not have the results by now. So to conclude um, this first part, uh, type two diabetes is a risk factor for osteoporosis and for fracture. Um, and the BMD measurement is often inadequate in these patients because it's normal to maximum, um, maximum a little bit decreased or osteopenia. So the risk assessment is improved by using uh, TBS in these patients, for example. And um, like this new study showed, maybe especially for those patients, um, um, with the younger ones, we have a little bit, a little bit of a difficulty, especially using FRAGs. Um, and uh, so the treatment of the type 2 diabetes should be um, in association with an osteoporosis be cautious and uh, maybe ch transform to a safer uh, treatment for the bone. So in the second part I will focus on <coughs> chronic inflammatory diseases. Um, as you all know we have uh, on normal conditions we have a steady state of the bone formation and the bone resorption. Um, and if we have chronic inflammatory states, we have a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines which can directly increase the osteoclastogenesis and activate the osteoclasts. So we have uh, loss of bone um, and in the different diseases it can um, affect differently the bone. Um, this is not a really recent study, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, in the Brunig study, we showed that patients who have an increase of high sensitive um, CRP levels, which is a very sensitive <laughs> method, um, that those patients who have an, uh, a higher high sensitive uh, CRP are at higher risk for, um, for fracture. And um, this is also the reason why the, an increase in CRP, so a chronic inflammatory state, uh, state is a risk factor for systemic bone loss. If we look into the rheumatoid arthritis, we have a lot of uh, risk factors for um, losing um, bone, but we have not just the systemic part, we have most of all the local um, bone loss, which is um, um, in, which we can find at the metacarpal joints, but also at the radius and the ulna, um, and it's, um, it's the direct effect especially um, in aqua-positive uh, patients, which have a rheumatoid factor around the CCP positive. But we can find these erosions locally also in patients which are just aqua-positive, but do not have a clinical, um, clinical onset of the rheumatoid arthritis by now. So in uh, Erlang, we, we had a really big cohort by now of patients which have a positive rheumatoid factor or um, anti-CCP. And um, with HRPQCT, the high sensitive uh, um, CT scan or MRI, we found in the predilection sites already changes, changes which can be found in the rheumatoid arthritis patients too. So when you look between the uh, aqua positive and the aqua negative patients and you go into the systemic uh, bone, you see in this paper from uh, Roland Kotzian, that uh, you can distinguish patients if they have uh, aqua positivity or not, because if you have aqua positivity, you have an increased reduction of trabecular bone. Um, so this, the, the aqua positive patients have a much greater bone loss in, uh, in the systemic, but also in the, in the local um, phenotype. If you look into the psoriasis and the psoriatic arthritis, we have a different um, a, a different phenotyping. So we have the local bone loss also with the erosion um, in this in this part, but also adhesifides, which is a uh, which is a plus of, of bone formation. So it's uh, 
from the typical um, phenotype different to those from the rheumatoid arthritis. And also, compared to the rheumatoid arthritis, these changes can be found in patients with chest psoriasis without any evident clinical arthritis. So the differentiation or the clinical onset is um, with, with the systemic inflammation is the first thing, but it starts much earlier and it's difficult to detect these patients and if it's not clinically relevant, this is not going to be treated. Um, in this um, work, we, we looked at the patients with psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis compared to controls with the high resolution CT scan of the radius. Um, and uh, we found that psoriatic arthritis patients had a significant reduction of, of the trabecular bone, mineral density, and the trabecular bone microstructure. But there was no difference between the psoriasis and the, and the control patients. So the systemic bone loss is not a problem in psoriasis patients. Um, and to go back to the first work of uh, Roland Kotzian, in this group, he, we had the, uh, the ACPA negative and the ACPA positive uh, patients. And if you add the psoriatic arthritis patients, they do not differ, differ from the um, seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So we have a problem in bone loss in all of the three diseases, but the worst is the ACPA positive uh, rheumatoid arthritis. In ankylosing spondylitis and non radiographic spondyloarthritis, we have also a, a local bone um, formation building syndesmophytes on the axial skeleton and also an increased risk for vertebral and non vertebral fractures in these patients. Um, and we have as well a systemic inflammation, and as we all know, patients who have an ele elevated CRP level are um, those who are treated worst or have the, 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 the most uh, rapid progression of um, building syndesmophytes. Um, and uh, we have a huge range of osteoporosis um, prevalence uh, values in the literature, depending on different imaging and uh, the problem that the, the DEXA measurement uh, with syndesmophytes is also always a little bit difficult in these patients. Um, but we have definitely a plus of bone, but a systemic bone loss. And uh, in the literature, we found that, that ankylosing spondylitis, um, and the patients were also um, examined with this high resolution CT scan, had a reduction in the peripheral skeleton of total and cortical volumetric BMD, and also a reduction of cortical thickness and an increase of cortical porosity. Um, the duration of the, uh, of the symptoms of the patient were over 23 years in median, so um, they are quite a um, long-standing disease and we found, uh, they found uh, significant changes in bone structure. What we did, we uh, took 107 patients with non-radiographic um, access spondyl arthritis, so at a much earlier stage of the disease, um, with a disease duration of approximately 6 years. And we did also the HRPQ CT scan in these patients. And what we found is that, again, the total and um, the cortical volumetric BMD was reduced, less like in the other um, publication. Um, and the cortical thickness is also reduced. But what is interesting is that patients within two years of disease already show a reduction of cortical thickness. So it's a very uh, early uh, change we can detect within the first two years of disease. Um, and um, patients which um, have a long-standing disease or more than two years have additionally a reduction of the, of the, of the BMD. The influence of uh, steroids in this patient and these um, were also patients who had uh, um, additional manifestation of Crohn's disease and something like that. So if they had the glucocorticoid treatment in the past, um, the, there was a, a difference in, in trabecular bone too if they um, had a prior history of, of steroid treatment. If we look into the uh, chronic inflammatory bowel diseases, um, known as Cro also Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, we have um, a lot of risk factors which can reduce or affect the bone. We have the malnutrition and malabsorption. Um, which influences the calcium and vitamin D absorption. Um, a lot of, especially most uh, grown patients, um, have uh, ileo uh, iliozucal resection. Mm -hmm. So there is also a problem with um, absorption, problem with malabsorption. 
And um, further, they have systemic inflammation, a lot of, of corticosteroids over the, the course of disease, and so we have multiple risk factors. Um, the risk for fractures in these patients is increased, and uh, the vitamin D levels in uh, IBD patients are generally low if they are not uh, substituted. And uh, in the, interestingly, in the um, big analysis, the steroid intake was um, not really related um, in, the, in the risk factor analysis, and the hips are more often affected than the vertical bone. Uh, what we did is we again did an HRBQ CT of patients with IBD, so it were, there were 98 IBD patients compared to 50 controls. Um, and the disease duration of the inflammatory bowel disease was about 10 years. And uh, we compared the bone mineral density and microstructure, and what we found is that the, cortical, uh, that the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis both disease show a significant cortical bone loss, um, and just the Crohn's disease has an additional trabecular bone loss. So um, we, we found a more prominent bone loss in the Crohn's disease, which is quite assumable because they have a little bit of more risk factors in these patients. Um, but uh, the predominant uh, change is the cortical bone loss. And the risk factors for a reduction of cortical bone in the IBD patients is the female sex. Um, if they have a low BMI and if they do not reach clinical remission of the, of the disease. The impact of the steroid intake, and it was um, a retrospective analysis, so we had to, to, to um, distinguish between that the intake of over 5 mg steroids over 3 months uh, in these patients and there was a minor impact uh, with an um, increase of cortical porosity in those patients which have a higher intake of steroids over the years. So to conclude this, um, we, we know from literature and also from the data presented today that systemic inflammation leads to systemic bone loss. Um, we, in psoriatic arthritis and in rheumatoid arthritis, um, you, you see a reduction of um, bone mineral density and uh, bone microstructure. And the trabecular bone loss in rheumatoid arthritis is even more pronounced if you have uh, ACPA positivity. Um, furthermore, psoriasis by itself is not a risk factor for bone loss um, without any systemic arthritis. And uh, the, the patients with inflammatory bowel diseases show predominantly a change of cortical bone and increased fracture risk in these patients. Um, and Crohn's disease shows, despite the cortical bone uh, loss, an additional trabecular bone loss. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Um, how many patients with uh, rheumatic disease in Austria used uh, biological therapy? I do not have the data on that, but uh, it's percent. one percent. Fifty percent or? No. We, we, do, uh, we, we have the one database from, from um, the, uh, it's, it's about 50. Going up 50 56 percent. What is the um, treatment uh, osteoporotic, osteopenia in this group of patients? Yeah. Good, it's good very interesting question. Yeah. 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 Um, as to my knowledge, there are no prospective uh, data on this topic, um, and I think it's very interesting because um, in ankylosing spondylitis, we know that. Uh, the progression of the bone formation is not influenced, or at least not that much influenced by the biological therapy, as we would assume. So I think it's interesting, but I, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, Richard, we, Richard, we, uh, there was this, um, let's, let's put it, it was a, it was a cautionary uh, tale to not give two antibodies if you are in, in but I guess we are, 
coming over that. And because the denosumab data, there are some papers out that show even in biological treated rheumatoid patients um, successful treatment with denosumab, for example. Um, and makes and there is the, the original data. And uh, uh, and questions. Uh, um, what uh, treatment topic in uh, patients with uh, transit or trans uh, with uh, transplant post transplantation osteoporosis in Austria? What is the um, first uh, drugs? Is it or do you smell? Uh, in, ah, okay, no, in the immunosuppressant, um, yeah, immunosuppressant yeah, patients. Yeah, yeah, the point. Yeah, actually, according to the, according to the national um, guidelines for osteoporosis treatment, there is no difference. So if we have to, if they have a chronic um, kidney disease or have a, a reduced uh, renal function, then uh, denosumab will be preferred. Otherwise, to my knowledge, there is no difference in treatment. So first, um, first treatment is uh, bisphosphonate. In patients after transplantation, gap are similar. So I, think, I didn't get the question completely, sir. Gap are. Liver. Ah, <coughs> liver. Yes, uh, there is, uh, to my knowledge, no difference in, in the. In the um, we, we, there, there are some data, but they are also very limited, of course, because small numbers. Periparatide is actually in transplantational disease very effective, but what? But you have to close it anyway with this phosphonate. We use the high dose of vitamin D in this group yeah. patients. What is the high? Uh, four uh, and two thousand per day, or four thousand, or six, or ten. I would be about ten thousand. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, so, thank you. Um, can you explain uh, the mechanism of relationship between ACPA positive uh, patient with rheumatoid arthritis and the risk of osteoporotic fracture independently of polyneural death? Can you explain the mechanism? Independently of the Independent of the I mean, what we know from, from basic science is that uh, the ACPAs directly stimulate osteoclastogenesis. So um, we know that if you give a, my, uh, a mouse or in, inject a mouse the ACPAs, they will induce an arthritis, but also the osteoclastogenesis. And um, it's uh, the characterization of the, of the ACPAs. Uh, the state of this of these antibodies, which um, induce the osteoclastogenesis. So I think this is one uh, major finding. Um, there is, to my knowledge, no um, information about bone mineral density in an uh, ACPA-positive cohort published by now. Um, we found the regional uh, changes, um, but there is no data on that if it starts systemically early. So we just know that there is a local uh, problem. And, we still do not know what happens with the onset of the disease. Thank you. And the last presentation. Thank you.